For seven years, I worked for Serato on their artist relations team. And part of my role was to help DJs understand the software inside out. In this video, I'm gonna pass that knowledge on to you and I'm gonna show you through all of the settings inside Serato that you need to master so that you can use the software properly. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so first let's head to the settings and then here under DJ preferences, you've got the control preferences. And the first setting you need to be aware of is playback keys use shift. If you tick this box, then when you come out of the settings, you can't trigger any keyboard shortcuts without holding down shift first to trigger those keyboard shortcuts. Next up is lock playing deck. Now, if you don't have this box checked, you could be playing a song in Serato and if you accidentally load a song onto that deck, then it will actually replace the song that you're playing. So my recommendation is to keep this box checked at all times. Next up is sort cues and loops chronologically. If you check this box, what it will do is it will change the order of all of your saved hot cues and loops, depending on where in the track they were set. So if there's a hot cue that's right at the beginning of the track, but you've got the hot cue set maybe here on your controller, it will automatically put it right at the start of your hot cues. Just beneath that is enable hot cues. If you have this box unchecked, Serato will not let you set any hot cues while the song is playing. Show beat jump controls will bring up a brand new row of numbers on the main screen right here, just below your loop numbers. You can then select one of these numbers. Let's choose 16. And then if you press this left arrow or this right arrow, this will jump through the track perfectly in time by 16 beats. I tend to leave this on 32. You can usually access this via your controller as well on the DDJ Rev1. You hold down shift and press hot cue. And then right here, you've got your beat jump controls on the DDJ Rev1. These buttons right here on the left and right will actually jump forward or backwards. And the middle two buttons will actually change the beat jump value like that. Beat jump is actually really useful for setting hot cues. So if I go to the first hot cue right there, press this beat jump button, set a new hot cue, press it again, press that hot cue, press the beat jump again, set hot cue four, beat jump one more time and set hot cue five. Beat jump is a really quick way of setting hot cues on any track. Replace primary hardware pad mode with stems will allow you to take a pad mode on your controller or device and replace it with Serato's stems pad mode. This is one that I use every time. So if we check this box and then choose one of these options, let's go with sampler. Now, if I press sampler on the DDJ Rev1, these pads now control Serato stems right here. You can see that these pads, the top four pads correspond with the top four pads inside Serato and the bottom four pads will control the stems effects. Just a quick one, if you're interested in downloading a completely free scratch tool so that you can practice with the same scratch sounds that I do, then just click the link in the description. You've also got your quantize value here. Now, if you do use quantize, I recommend leaving this on one beat. That way it is way more likely to be perfectly in time. Auto gain is a feature I've never turned off inside Serato. And that's because Serato analyzes every track in your library and applies a gain to every song, depending on how loud the waveform is. So in theory, you can leave your trim gains at the same level for both decks and every song you play will be the same volume. I've never turned this off and I recommend you do the same. The next section is called on song load. And that means all of the following settings will apply the moment you load the song into a deck. So first of all, play from first cue point. I have this ticked. That means when I load a song into a deck, it will automatically queue it up at the very first hot cue. I've been using this setting for so long that if I was to turn this off, it would really throw me next time I do a set. Just beneath that is instant doubles. With this ticked, you can have a song playing. And then if you load the exact same song onto the other deck, you can see it's mirrored that track. So it's playing at exactly the same speed and in exactly the same place as the other track. This can be really useful if you find yourself in a situation where you can only use one deck at a club. Every time you finish mixing the track on the left deck, you can just instant double it to the right deck so that the left deck is clear again for you to DJ with. Underneath that, it says turn off effects. This means if you have an effect turned on inside Serato, like that, the next time you load a song into that deck, Serato will automatically turn the effect off. 
If you're finding this video useful, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. Finally, in this section, you've got analyze stems. This one is very important. So what will happen if you have this box checked, every time you load a song into a deck, Serato will be analyzing the stems in the background. Now, if your computer is fairly old, this is gonna put so much strain on the CPU. My computer is an M1 Pro, so I have this box checked because being able to just use stems immediately is valuable to me and my computer can handle it. So be careful. If your computer is kind of old and kind of slow, do not have this box checked. But if your computer is new and has a lot of power, you're good. Next up is sync mode. Now I'm going to really simplify this so that it doesn't confuse anybody. You can either turn sync off completely or my choice is to have it on simple sync. With simple sync enabled, if I have a song playing on this deck and then I have this song loaded into this deck, if I press the sync button, you'll see that the BPM of this deck has changed to match the BPM of this deck. If I do use sync, that's the way I use it. All I want it to do is change the BPM of the song I'm going to mix in to match the BPM of the deck that's currently playing. I don't want anything more complicated than that. That's the simplest and easiest way to use sync inside Serato. And that's how I recommend you use sync inside Serato if you choose to. Right next to that, you have the sync preferences. Now, first off, you have snap to beat grid. So if I have this track playing and I press play on this deck, you can see that the beat grids are completely off. But if I press sync one more time, the beat grids will snap together. So this could be a really useful tool if you're on top of your beat grids and you know that all of the songs in your library have their beat grids set correctly. If you're unsure about beat grids and you don't really use them, then I highly recommend not using the beat grid snap because it could, in theory, mess up your mix big time. Just beneath that, you've got maintain sync on track load. This will do exactly what it sounds like. If you're DJing and you're using sync, leaving this checked will mean that every subsequent track that you load into a deck in Serato will keep that synced state. Next up, let's check out the audio tab. Now there's not much in here, but it is a very important tab. So right here, you've got your USB buffer size. Now, when I was working at Serato, I saw so many DJs who had it set to one millisecond. Whatever you do, don't do this, even if you have a really powerful computer. The reason being, the difference on your CPU load between one millisecond and two milliseconds is huge, but the difference in terms of actual latency that you can hear is basically zero. So the lowest you should ever go with this is two, but to be safe, I would keep this on five or even 10, especially if I was doing a gig such as a wedding or a corporate, minimize the risk entirely and keep it on 10. Just beneath that, you've got use laptop speakers, self-explanatory. If you keep this box checked, you can then actually DJ using a controller and the music will come out of your laptop speakers. Now let's head to the library and display tab. And under library, you've got custom crate columns. I leave this one checked all the time and it's a brilliant setting. If you check this box, you can reorder any of your crates inside Serato and each one of those crates will keep that specific order. For example, you might want to sort one crate by BPM, you might want to sort another crate by artist. If you check this box, you can do that. Just to the right of there, you've got enable play count. Keep this one checked because Serato will keep a note of how many times you've played every single song in your library. I've even known DJs to use this feature to filter out and delete any songs at the end of the year that they haven't played. So that could be a really good way of maintaining your library and making sure you don't accumulate too many tracks. Under display, you've got high track stroke artist brackets AM mode. If you check this box and go back to the main screen, you can see that the artist and the title of the track at the top of the Serato screen has disappeared. You can even use the keyboard shortcut, which is option question mark to hide and show the name of the track. Just beneath that is EQ colored waveforms. If you check this box and go back to the main screen, if you adjust the EQs, you can actually see that it changes the color of the waveform inside Serato so that it corresponds with the frequencies that you are adjusting using the EQs. If you didn't know, the colors of the waveforms inside Serato actually correspond with the frequency. So red is a bassy frequency, green is a mid-range frequency, and blue is a treble frequency. You also have performance pad cue layout. If we uncheck this box and go back to the main screen, you can see that the hot cues are shown as a kind of list. We go back 
check that box and then come back, you can now see that the hot cues are laid out just like they are on your DJ controller. So those are the Serato settings that you need to master to use the software like a pro. Let me know the settings inside Serato that you cannot live without. My name is Blakey and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.